Okay, let's talk about the CLEP pre-calculus exam. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're interested in taking and even more interested in passing the CLEP pre-calculus exam. And that is an awesome goal because the CLEP program, I mean, it really is a unique uh, program that all students really should take advantage of because if you can pass these CLEP exams, you're going to get full college credit without having to take that course. That's going to save you time and money. And I really don't know of too many more important resources than time and money. So if you have taken pre-calculus or you're taking pre-calculus right now, it definitely behooves you to study and try to take this exam. But there is a lot to know in pre-calculus. And what I have here is a nice little practice problem that you should be able to do without too many uh, difficulties if you are fully prepared for the CLEP pre-calculus exam. But uh, before I cover this problem, of course, I'm going to give you an opportunity to solve it all on your own. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. And over those years, I've constructed my math help program, which I uh, do a lot of work with uh, people in their particular math courses. I assist them in middle and high school mathematics, and I do a lot in test prep as well. Matter of fact, I have an outstanding CLEP pre-calculus test prep course. I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description of this video. If you are trying to get ready for this uh, particular exam, definitely check out my course. I mean, there is a lot you need to know uh, to pass this, uh, pass this particular exam. But if you can pass uh, this CLEP pre-calculus exam, you would be definitely ready to start taking calculus in college if that is one of your goals. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here. What I want you to do is to graph, okay, graph the interval. Uh, well, I'm just going to say it right here. Here is the interval. Here it is. I'm not going to even uh, describe it. But go ahead and write a uh, graph that represents this uh, interval. Okay, let me give you a, a quick hint. It will be on a number line. Okay, so this question can kind of come in two different flavors. I could show you the graph and then I could give you the interval notation. So we're talking about interval notation. And this is kind of a step up, kind of a more advanced way to write intervals on the real number line than you do, like, let's say, like in basic algebra, uh, algebra one or algebra two. Okay, so if you think you can graph this, go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and get into the solution and then we'll see how well you um, kind of did with this. All right, so there's basically two ways you can uh, do this problem, right? It all depends on how you learn interval notation, but here is this interval right here, okay? So what we're talking about is the interval negative two, okay, uh, ne ne uh, all numbers that are less than and equal to negative two, okay? And uh, basically, that's going towards negative infinity, all right? So the way we would graph this would be a closed circle at negative two and an arrow going towards negative infinity. This is all numbers uh, that are uh, less than or equal to negative two going, of course, to all this right here towards negative infinity. So this is this interval, okay? Now, what does this U mean? Okay, well, this is a union. So basically, we're going to have two situations here, two um, pieces to this graph. This is also an or situation, okay? An or situation, we're talking about compound inequalities. But let's go ahead and take a look at this part of the graph. This is three to positive infinity, right? So these are intervals, and this is interval notation, which is a little bit more advanced way to express intervals or solutions like this on a real number line. You want to use interval notation at the pre-calculus and calculus level. But uh, this would be all numbers that are greater than 3. In case all numbers greater than 3 would be an open circle at 3 and an arrow going towards positive infinity. All right, so this would be one version of this graph. But um, if you weren't taught compound inequalities uh, or basic linear inequalities using circles for these particular points, you may have used brackets and open parentheses. So instead of a closed circle at negative two, you could have a nice bracket, same arrow uh, going towards negative infinity. And then uh, for three, okay, you could have a parenthesis and this arrow going towards positive infinity. So this is basically the two graphs that you uh, should be able to understand. So 
another version of this problem would be I would give you this graph right here and I could say write the interval notation for that and of course this would be the answer. All right, so hopefully this was, wasn't that difficult of a problem, but this is something you absolutely need to know at the pre-calculus level, all right? Now, if you got this problem right, I certainly you know, wouldn't say, oh, well, then you're totally ready to take this CLEP pre-calculus exam and ace it. You know, that's you know, not the case, all right? And you'd wanna go into this exam as prepared as you possibly can, all right? You wanna go in telling yourself, I'm gonna try to get every single question right. Because if you have any kind of attitude that's less than that, like, well, I want to do the bare minimum just to pass, well, guess what? This, the, this exam is going to be too difficult, all right? You're, if you have that attitude, you're probably going to, like, miss a passing score by one. Okay, so you want to try to, like, totally ace this exam. So there is a lot of material you need to know at the pre-calculus level. And I'd like to uh, help you along your journey to um, actually pass this so you can save yourself time and money. So again, uh, go ahead and check out my CLEP pre-calculus test prep course. Um, I'll leave the uh, link in the description of this video. I think you'll be very impressed with the amount of content that is there. But anyways, uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your college endeavors, and certainly on the CLEP pre-calculus exam. I definitely hope you pass it. But again, you're going to have to put in the work and effort, but it'll be definitely worth it if you get that nice letter in the mail or that email saying, hey, you passed this thing. Now you'll be ready to go on to more exciting things like calculus. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.